Morning all. I'd like to show you a fantastic game this morning played in the team championship in Russia in 2005. So played in Sochi actually. Uh, playing white was Konstantin Lander who at the time of this game was 2571 and his opponent playing black Evgeny Shaposhnikov 2550 at the time of this game. Uh, at the time of this video Shaposhnikov is ranked 73 in the Russian FIDE list and Lenda playing white is actually ranked 32 at 2640 nowadays. So let's have a look. So Konstantin Lenda played e4 and Avengi played the rock solid Korakan defense. Well it has a reputation of being solid and was favored a lot by Anatoly Karpov. Uh, d4 and now d5. White plays now knight c3. And now d takes e4 by Aven Avenji Shaposhnikov. So knight takes e4, and this is really a main line move now. Bishop f5. In my live book, it's got 9,892 games. Uh, knight d7 slightly less popular at 5,036 games. Knight f6 would be 2176 games so bishop f5 the main line move and the retreat now knight g3 is the top move here actually uh, with not over 9000 games knight c5 much rarer 490 games there's also queen f3 by the way 37 but the main move knight g3 bishop g6 h4 the main move h6 the main move knight f3 the main move and white now is threatening knight e5 among other things knight d7 is played here h5 is usually played here uh, with over 5000 games bishop d3 only 186 so carrying on with h5 gaining the space bishop h7 and now bishop d3 the main move so there's all theory so far taking queen takes e6 is the top move all theory so far. And then the top move here again is played, which is Bishop f4 with over 2,000 games, 2,030 games. Bishop d2, only 16, 12 games, well, nearly, this is the second most popular, Bishop d2. So Bishop f4. And now we see in this position for Bishop f4, actually, Black's top move is played, which is Queen a5 check. 13, 40 games now, Queen a5 check. The second most popular is knight gf6 with 694 games. The third most popular is bishop b4 check with 198. So queen a5, main move, bishop goes back. Now the top move here is to play queen c7 with 1294 games. It's supposed to be about equal, the evaluation on that. But in this game, bishop b4, which is supposed to be about equal as well, is played is 624 games. Now c3, the top move. The bishop goes back to e7, the top move. c4, the top move attacking the queen. And now here we really deviate finally from trodden territory, heavily trodden territory. The natural retreat would seem to be queen c7, and that's the most often played move. The queen looks good there because sometimes you know there's a battery with bishop d6 to put pressure on e4. Not necessarily in this exact position because you know knight e4s. But in principle, queen c7 looks like a, a very logical move. In this game, we see a much rarer move, queen a6. The stats are queen c7, 441 games. I've seen this in my book. Queen a6, only 19 games. But the evaluation is meant to be about equal, and it's a very small game sample. Queen a6. Okay, it has has some ideas behind it. White now castles kingside. Uh, knight g f6, and we've got a very low game sample now of games. So let's end our theoretical opening debate and look at this position. Sorry, after queen a6, rather. Uh, we see white castling. And not knight g f6, but here again, um, a slight deviation from the very small game sample 
is played. Usually it's knight g f6. We see um, black playing in this position rook d8. So what kind of threat does this carry? I mean, it's eyeing at the queen as if knight c5 might be useful at some point. But um, actually, this is now extinguished, even though that might not be a major threat in this position for black. You know, perhaps black's best is just to carry on with knight f6, or maybe knight b6 is is also though something significant about the queen a6 to put pressure on that pin on c4. But what extinguishes uh, both uh, kind of ideas with b4. Now in this position, if black carried on with knight b6, let's have a quick look at this. Just rook fc1 and white's a little bit better. I don't think there's any big deal there. So anyway, black carried on with knight g f6. And then we see a kind of queenside squeeze with a4. So this looks to be like squeezing with a5 and almost trapping the queen after a5. Uh, almost so um now black gave the queen some squares to go in reverse with b6 rook f e1 and now black castled now there's a kind of weakness of the last move with castling here that this bishop is actually a loose piece in this position and white's next move addresses that particular issue which uh, is created by the simple castling um, white plays can you guess if I give you 10 seconds here what does white play okay knight f5 not too brilliant to start off with knight f5 and it is unpleasant if black takes you know, if e takes which didn't occur. Rook takes e7. What do we do about f5 or knight h4? If we try and protect uh, here, then well, h6 is hanging. All sorts of things are hanging. So we can't do that. So black played rook f e8, hoping okay, an exchange on e7. Would that be so terrible? Let's let's see that. If white just takes on e7, rook takes e7. It's not the end of the world here. In fact, h5 is loose in this position. Black might be nerving on h5. So how does white actually protect h5 in this position? Um, perhaps white has to play a pawn sack uh, from some positional compensation. That's not the idea though, it wasn't played. So in this position, we see an incredible concept being revealed now. So not knight takes e7, but instead something else. And I wonder if you can guess it. In fact, uh, this is the subject of a puzzle, uh, which uh, was well received actually. Uh, a very interesting puzzle position. So you, there should be, I'll put an interactive puzzle position on the right now that you, you can click on and try this position to see if you can find the move played in the game. There's actually two very good moves with the same kind of concept, uh, but uh, the move played in the game is not actually the most accurate like engine move, but it's still a beautiful concept. So can you guess the move played in the game? Or I'll give you the same number of points for the engine move actually. So 10 seconds starting from now, what would you play here? Okay, in the game we saw knight takes g7. So it's damaging black's king safety a little bit, but the damage uh, is going to get a lot worse very soon now. Black in the game, well, if he doesn't take, uh, you know, white is threatening now bishop takes h6, and also, of course, knight takes e8. So if black doesn't take, what does he do? Uh, you know, if we play queen b7, you know, if we just take the rook actually is, is the strongest. Um, or even taking on h6 is, is strong. You know, if rook f8, then you know, horrible things happen like this. So that's not nice. 
So basically, the knight has to be taken. So it's taken. And now, can you guess the move that white plays in this position? And actually, from an aesthetic point of view, we can consider a lot of tactical undermining going on because we've knocked out g7, so h6 is slightly weaker in principle. Just bear that in mind that knocking out g7 ripples on h6. And conversely, uh, there's another pawn chain here. But anyway, so what would you play in this position if I gave you 10 seconds starting from now? Okay, I did give you a slight clue. I was very naughty. White plays rook takes e6, and this undermines this pawn chain, of course, which g6. We've got g6 eyed now. But what else does black do here if he ignores the rook sacrifice? Well, perhaps absolutely best is to ignore the rook sacrifice. Um, and the Indian suggestion is queen c8. Now, this is still a bad position for black. Uh, White has some very powerful ideas here, uh, but it's not as bad as what we're going to see in the game. Um, if White continues, Bishop takes h6, for example, this kind of continuation is pretty dangerous. With Rook takes e7, White's got uh, a lot of pawns coming up, and White's you know significantly uh, better. There's a lot of pressure in this position to deal with, for example. But anyway, in the game, uh, Black didn't play that Queen C8. It's probably the best move. Uh, another idea is is Bishop F8, but this leaves C6 hanging. Now, if Queen B7 here, D5. And this is a little bit better than the continuation. We've seen it's a little bit better for white. So a clearer advantage because white can actually play like this. And it's very, very nice. Very, very nice. So a lot of pressure here to follow on black. So in the game, OK, this doesn't seem appetizing, though, to play either bishop f8 or queen c8. Black you know, went f takes e6, not really seeing too many apparent dangers here. Now, in this position, this gets you. You need very high precision to follow this up. I'll demonstrate why actually. So, if I give you ten seconds here, what would you play in this position? So, ten seconds starting from now. I warn you, I'm going to deduct 200 points if you get the move wrong here. I'll give you 200 if you get the move right. Another few seconds. Do you need it? All right. Now, if you played Queen G6 check, that's very bad. Very, very bad indeed. You haven't seen that black has actually got an adequate defenses here. For example, King H8. What can you do in this position if check? Now knight h7, and where's the attack? So the duck 200 points there, there's no attack in this position at all. If bishop takes h6, you know, black's just going to play rook g8. So no attack at all. No, you need a very, very high precision move. Give yourself 200 points if you found this. Bishop takes h6 check. Now, one clear point is that if king takes h6, we play queen g6, and that's checkmate. So that's not possible. You might think, well, OK, let's examine king h8, not king f7, because queen g6 is mate. So that leaves not too many uh, alternatives. Uh, king h8 or king g8. Well, King G8 can be ruled out as well because Queen G6 check, and then we're mating on G7. So it's actually only in this position, King H8. Okay, so we arrive at this position. We've given up significant material here. So what have we got in return? So for the moment, we're a rook and a minor piece down. 
in fact we've only got two minor pieces the opponent's got three and we're missing one rook so how does this proceed what would you play in this position if I give you 10 seconds here okay white now plays bishop g7 check forcing moves are so dangerous in chess what can black do about this well let's see if he just avoids taking that if he plays king g8 which wasn't played then queen g6 and this is pretty nasty stuff this queen g6 even though it's only a bishop and queen and pawn rounds here okay a knight as well how does black actually defend this if knight f8 that seems like a, a good defensive try another horrible forcing move just taking the knight off so now with king h8 queen g7 so the king has to take and now knight g5 and embarrassingly the knight and queen are working exceptionally well together in this position so exceptionally that it's mate the next move what can black do to avoid queen f7 mate there's no defense here so in the game actually it wasn't much better black played in this position king takes g7 and now we see queen g6 check so that pawn's very useful for queen g6 check okay and in this position black actually resigned and let's examine why well there's two main alternatives if king f8 then it's very similar to what we've just witnessed knight g5 and it's mate next move on f7 okay but there's one other possibility king h8 we still play knight g5 and we're threatening now knight f7 mate so how does black parry this well in this position uh, the obvious way to parry this is actually rook f8 so this didn't occur in the game but what would white play now in this position to finish the game if I give you 10 seconds here okay white would play h6 look at this h6 there's no defense to queen g7 if you try and play knight h5 then you leave a weakness of the last move which is queen h7 mate so how do you defend g7 you know rook g8 knight f7 no defense again how embarrassing these three attacking pieces are running rampant over here it's this queen which it seems a bit sad on a6 in all this it doesn't help to have the queen on a6 uh, so that's not too good so on king h8 knight g5 there's one other very technical defense here of f7 forget rook f8 let's go for a more technical defense against knight f7 which is knight e5 does this help black not really it's just a hopeless computer defense uh, trying to play the best moves just to stave off mate we just snap this off and we've still got the threat of knight f7 um, is there any any nuance here if rook f8 we still just play h6 all, all that the computer's done with this particular defense is is provide a spike check that's all a spike check and now it's it's going to be mating uh, on the next move whatever black does so a wonderful demolition job if ever there was one I thought in this game starting from this knight f5 so after rook f8 what we saw was quite beautiful actually we saw two pawn chains being wrecked f7 to e6 and g7 to h6 totally obliterated by this combination let's just have a look at that knight takes g7 so h6 is weakened then rook takes e6 weakening g6 and this was taken because you know black didn't see i think the power of bishop takes h6 here and bishop g7 it's so powerful that the queen and knight 
are coming in with such crushing effect. I hope you enjoyed that one. Comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.